Hi, this is Randy Kirk, and uh, we're here in the New Year's season. You may be seeing this uh, on New Year's Day or maybe on the second or third, but I'm in the New Year's spirit. So I came up with a bunch of 2023 um, predictions, some of my theories of, about what's going to happen with Tesla in 2023. I'm not going to do much outside of Tesla on other Elon Musk companies or other aspects of the Elon Musk world. Uh, maybe I'll do that later. But for today, I'm just going to stick with Tesla and why, and some of these predictions will show you why I think that Tesla might be at 450, 500, or even 550 by the end of the year. Who knows? There's a couple of things that could happen that aren't even on my list, like that maybe the robotaxi thing starts that would, you know, change everything. But let's get into the predictions in a second, just really quick. Um, I'm uh, hoping that you've already bought the book, uh, The Elon Musk Mission. If you haven't, it's a great time to go out and do that. Um, and also, I'm going to get real active on Patreon. Let me talk to you a little bit more about that at the end. Stick around to the end. I'm going to talk to you about something pretty cool that I'm going to be doing with Patreon. Okay, so number one prediction, Tesla will make and sell at least 2.5 million cars and trucks next year. And that's with a 25% margin. So there's a lot of videos. You can go back and look the last couple of weeks. Just look them up. The titles tend to tell the story. I'll, I'll link a couple of them below. But if you look at over the last week or so, you'll see how I come up with my actually 2.65 million is my real number. But I'm going to, for the for this prediction, I'm going to make it 2.5, give myself a little leeway. Uh, why I think that's going to happen with no reduction in margins at all. So the 25% margin will be a slight reduction, but it certainly won't be low compared to other car companies, especially. So um, I think that's a solid, uh, uh, a solid number. And of course, if we hit that, if we hit those kind of numbers, if it becomes obvious to the street that there's a chance that we can do 2.5 million cars. And when, when, when's that going to happen? What's the catalyst? I say that the second quarter, they ship 600,000 cars. If they ship 600,000 cars and trucks in the second quarter, then the street's going to be pretty well able to say, no, this is 2.5 or more. So that's kind of, maybe it'll be in the third quarter, they ship 600,000. So maybe it's 400,000, uh, I'm sorry, 500,000, the first quarter, 550, and then six. But anyway, somewhere along the line, uh, the street's going to get it that 2.5 or more is the number uh, for 2023. Well, that's obviously going to impact the profits for the company in a huge way compared to expectations. My next, uh, uh, my next specific uh, prediction is that 10,000 mega packs will be shipped. $22 billion worth of mega packs will be shipped, and it'll probably be more. Again, I'm giving a low number. Uh, uh, that'll be a, a 22 billion, maybe 10 to 12, maybe even $14 billion in profit, uh, which would equal the profit from all the cars uh, that the street believes they're gonna sell next year. So this Lather facility is huge news, which we broke. Um, uh, in the book, it was already there two months ago, and only now are they talking about it on Twitter and elsewhere. So um, that is uh, my prediction with regard to Megapax 10, uh, 10, uh, uh, 10, 10,000 megawatts, which is their annual capability, and way more after that. But for next year, sticking with 10,000. All right, next, they will announce two gigafactories. Now you say, okay, Randy, now how hard is that to predict? Elon said months ago, that he would give you the locations for two gigafactories before the end of the year, and then he didn't do it. Uh, just last week, he says, well, I'm not quite ready to tell you about one of them. We're really, really close, and the entire world thinks that that's going to be Mexico. Um, so maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe that's going to be a mega factory, or maybe that's going to be some other, whatever you want to call it, factory, but not a typical uh, gigafactory in the, in the Tesla style to build cars and trucks. I don't know. We don't know exactly what Mexico is going to be. There is obviously something going on there. So I'm just saying they will break ground on. They may announce more, but I'm just saying they will break ground on two gigafactories in 2023 um, and fairly soon. Not, not uh, at the end of the year. No, really soon. They'll break ground on these two uh, mega, mega, I mean, giga, gigafactories. They will also announce and or break ground on three mega pack factories. Now, let me uh, just say that it might be that that would include that Lathrop will be doubled in size or even uh, two and a half times in size. 
uh, uh, you know, making it larger, giving it more shifts, whatever, going from 40, uh, uh, 40 gigawatts to 100 gigawatts is what we've heard. Um, I think it's going to be at least a, at least two, maybe three, probably three new megapack factories around the country uh, to put them closer to the end user uh, around around the United States and North America, maybe Canada, maybe Mexico. Okay, so that's number uh, four. Number five is that FSD goes off beta. Now, again, you're saying, Randy, you're being so conservative. We want you to say that FSD is going to be, you know, you can sleep in the back seat. Um, maybe. Um, I've, I'll state elsewhere. You'll see YouTube videos on this coming up. I think that there's going to be two remaining problems next year. The two remaining problems are going to be parking lots and very congested areas of people uh, and or cars, uh, New York City type thing, San Francisco type thing, where, uh, yeah, those current uh, other brands of uh, full self-drive or uh, taxis, robo-taxis, those are on scripted routes. They're not going in the places where you have hundreds of people crossing on the light. So um, there's going to be um, uh, those two issues, I think, will be the final two issues. I don't, I, I have a, a, this idea that those won't be solved this year. So I'm just saying it'll go into uh, into full release. It will no longer be called beta. It will be uh, it will be off of beta. Okay. Number six. Uh, I'm sorry. Number seven. That actually included number six. Uh, that the heavy crowded area thing was what I was talking about. So number seven is that the new robo taxi slash compact car platform will be announced. And the line will be shown. We'll see what it looks like. We'll see all the details of, of what the plan is. They'll talk about where it's going to be made. They will start to build lines. Um, they will start to, you know, uh, uh, do, uh, uh, you know, preliminary samples and, and testing and whatnot so that in 2024, they can start to ramp early in 2024. That is my prediction. So this, I, be I believe for a long time, we set it in the book. We'll see if we turn out to be way ahead of the crowd again. I believe that the robo taxi and the compact car, whatever that compact car is going to look like, it might be different in Shanghai, different in Berlin, different in the United States, different in Mexico, different in India, whatever that car is going to look like, the compact car, it's going to be on the same platform as the ultimate robo taxi is going to be. This way, one line, you can have one line and it can be making robo taxis on one day, and then another day can be making one kind of uh, compact car and another day maybe it's making a different kind of compact car. So I'm I'm thinking that this is going to be a platform type of situation where they can mix it up based on the demand as the demand uh, occurs because the demand may early on be only for the compact cars and then eventually be for robo taxis uh, or maybe it'll go directly into robo taxis if if things really uh, happen quickly with regard to full self driving. So we'll see, but uh, that's my prediction. There will be an announcement early in 2023 about this new vehicle, um, and it will and it'll be fully spelled out in terms of, of what the planning is. Okay, number eight is the 4680 line in um, Austin reaches the run rate of 100 uh, terawatt, I mean 100 gigawatts uh, hours. So right now we don't know where it's at. Uh, it's certainly nowhere near that. It might be in the neighborhood of 15 or 20. Um, I'm saying that by the end of the year, sometime in this year, they will they will max it out at the original planned 100 gigawatts, uh, 100 gigawatt hours per year as the run rate. Um, so that's that's my that's my theory. And if that happens, it's going to be a, an extremely big deal. Okay, the next one is similar, and that is that gigawatts the uh, the line in Berlin for the 4680 will reach about, uh, what am I saying here, 30 gigawatt hours. The run rate will reach 30 gigawatt hours. In 2024, it will reach the 100 gigawatt hour uh, uh, run rate as planned. Uh, I think they will also start a line, I'm going to put in my prediction list, but I think they will also start a 4680 uh, line in Shanghai uh, next year. But I'm, I, that could be 2024, so I'm holding off on that for the prediction. Okay, next is... The supercharger factory doubles production or a new factory is built. So right now, I think it's 10,000, um, 10,000, I'm forgetting the number, but there's 40,000 there's, uh, 40, of the, yes, yeah, 10,000 a year. 
The current capacity of the facility making the, the superchargers is 10,000 a year. I'm saying that one way or the other, they're going to have to double that production. They're saying they're going to get to 100,000 total installed by the end of 2024. The only way they're going to be able to do that is if they double up or maybe even triple up on production. So I'm saying for next year, they're going to double that production. Um, the next one is, this is a, a big one. We've been talking about, we said this in the book, I think. I, I think we put this in the book, pretty sure, maybe not. But if not, I've been talking about it for uh, at least six or seven weeks. Um, I believe that Tesla will make a thousand of the uh, Optimus robots. Uh, maybe they'll only make 500, maybe it'll only be 300. I'm saying they're going to make a bunch of them in 2023. And these will be hand built or partially. Uh, maybe some of some of the parts of them will be, um, you know, manufactured uh, uh, in some kind of line. But for the most part, it's going to be hand built, three D printed. But they're going to make a bunch of them. I'm going to do an entire video on this. Uh, I'm, I'm planning to do this video with John Gibbs. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, Doctor Know It All knows it all, and uh, his robot expert. We're going to sit down the three of us. I'm going to go step by step about why would they do this. What are the advantages? Is it possible? Is it technically feasible? Um, and why would and 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 what are what are some of the use cases that they might put it to next year? So watch for that video. That'll be coming up early in January, uh, as soon as we can get the three of us together. So, thousand Optimus robots in place uh, in 2023. The second half of that one is that they will actually build a pilot line for Optimus. So there will be sometime near the end of the year, after a lot of these robots have been out there doing their thing for a while, um, they will say, okay, we're ready. We think we've got enough of the, of the parts in places, everything in place, the software, everything we need. We can go ahead and put together a pilot line where maybe they can make a thousand a month. Um, maybe they can make a cut, whatever the number is, who knows what the number would be, but it might be a thousand a week. It might be, I don't know, but whatever it is, there will be a pilot line in place manufacturing Optimus by the end of this year. Okay, think about that. It's massive, huge. I, I could be wrong, but that's my prediction. Nobody else is predicting this. I, I, I feel so all alone. <laughs> but nobody was predicting Lathrop either, except us. And now nobody's predicting this. So I think it's going to happen. All right. I think profits will be at $15 a share nobody's close to my number. I've been saying this for a while. In fact, I've, I've said as high as $19 a share. So I, I actually still think it'll be $19 a share. But $19 a share really assumes that everything is as perfect as it could possibly be. 2.65 million cars, full 30% margins. Um, Lathrop does what it's going to do. The IRA doesn't keep getting in, you know, getting in its own way. But, but uh uh, did, did we get to 100 gigawatts of uh, capacity on the um, on the uh, 4680 line? Um, all of these things, if all of them really happen, boom, 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 I think we get to $19 a share. Uh, the, the middle case would be $15 a share, and it could be as low as 12. That's like the bottom, bottom case. I don't see, I just, I just don't honestly see how it drops below $12 a share, but I've done all that. I'm going to put a lot of that up on uh, Patreon, not in huge detail like some other guys do, but throw out the case in enough detail that you'll be, that you and I will both understand what I'm saying. Okay. So next is stock hits $450. Why not? That would be roughly where it was at the top. The company has grown dramatically since it hit its top number, $1,250 a share pre-split, which is pretty close to $450 uh, post-split. So I'm just saying it gets back and it actually goes over um, the, uh, the earlier high, and it does that this year. Um, I can make the case all day long, but let's just take my number, let's say $15 a share. Um, if the company looks like it's going to do $15 a share, in 2023, and then you project on to the next level, next level, you know, coming up, I don't think it'll be hard to get to $450 at all. All right. Uh, and of course, the economy, the economics and the stock market mentality changing. So we're in a risk off situation right now. Um, when the risk on is back in place, and people are now 
uh, greedy again and they have fear of missing out, um, then the, the, the PE will increase as well as the what you, might, what you might call the fair market value will dramatically increase. And then the, uh, the added amount for the story will go on top, just like it did before. All right. Uh, number 15, Elon Musk will still be technicking at the end of the year. He's not leaving. He is not stepping down. He's not uh, going to hire somebody to be CEO. I didn't put any prediction about whether there might be a COO or or that this, uh, I forget his name, the fellow from uh, from a Shanghai factory gets some highly elevated position that makes him look like the heir apparent or all those things could happen. I'm not making any predictions because I don't have any inside thinking about it. What I do think is that Elon Musk will still be at the, at the, at the reins of this car. I'm going to say probably for five years, but certainly for all of 2023. Okay, number 16. Um, they will increase fairly dramatically in 2023 the number of revenue producing things at the charging stations. So there's a lot of stuff being tried, restaurants and drive-in movies and and uh, all, you know so many ideas. Well, there, I'm going to do a whole video on this eventually, probably end of January, maybe, uh, of all of the possibilities, all the things that could possibly be done at these charging stations that would you know, hit revenue. It just go right to the bottom line, practically, because you've already got the facility. So anyway, we'll talk about that more as I kind of think it through in more detail. Uh, I'm not the only person predicting this. There's a couple of other folks in this case that are saying, in fact, uh, Ross Gerber just the other day mentioned uh, how he sees, uh, he went out to the Santa Monica facility and saw what they're doing there and said, oh yeah, this is coming, okay? Uh, number 17, Dojo will be online. I know that's kind of an easy one, but Dojo will be online and we'll get to hear about it and learn more about what Dojo is doing. And then finally, number 18, and this is the most difficult one of all, I'm sure that you guys will all in the comments below, you're going to say, Randy, how could you possibly even think that's going to happen? I mean, this is really outside the box. I mean, it's really crazy. So number 18, Elon Musk will say something controversial. It's been great talking to you. Now let's talk about Patreon. Let's talk about Patreon. I've been thinking about this for a while, and I think it's time for me to use Patreon as a sounding board, as a place where we can really have some dialogue uh, and get excited about some of these things, uh, but it, do it in a way that I can talk off the top of my head um, without being, you know, kicked around YouTube or kicked around Twitter for being an idiot. So <laughs> I want to do some like stream of consciousness. Just in, just when I think of it, write up a quick note and put it up on Patreon. See what people think. Um, I want to put my YouTube videos up two days ahead, and maybe somebody will see that YouTube video two days ahead or a day ahead and say, Randy, did you know you messed up right here? And I can reshoot it or, or change it or edit it or whatever. Um, but I, that'll give you two days, sometimes one day, maybe sometimes only a half a day, but almost all of the videos are going to go ahead of when they're going to be published on YouTube, giving you some advantage in that regard as well. And then I'm going to do some of the charting um, some of the um, spreadsheet analysis of things like stock price or, or uh, what the profits look like and whatnot, not in as great a detail as I mentioned, but, but they'll be there. And the cool thing is that right now it's five bucks to be on my Patreon. <laughs> so you can join my Patreon for five bucks a month. And if you join now, you will be grandfathered in. I'm never going to charge you more in the future if, you're, if, you, if you come in now and stay in that'll be your price forever. So uh, the, the link to Patreon is down below. I hope you come on board and, and, and participate in Patreon. Um, and uh, again, have a happy new year. Great talking to you.